Let's pick on observability. I know that you've got some background in open telemetry as well. So what do, where do you think open telemetry is going these days? Oh, man. Oh, it's really cool to see the evolution of open telemetry because in like 2019, open telemetry was announced at Barcelona, at KubeCon. Yep. And then, you know, over the last few years, it's had like a lot of consistent contributions. And like I had a, I had a talk we saw earlier today, like in the mm -hmm. last six months, it's just escalated. Um, at a rate that it just hasn't been seen before, right? Like even before the six months, Open Telemetry was the second most contributed uh, project in all of CNCF. Right. And so seeing this adoption um, is critical, right? Because it's yep. showing that like you know Open Telemetry has built, um, has started to build up, gotten a little bit more mature, and at this point starting to cross the chasm. So from the functionality point of view, like tr distributed tracing, yes. Like, absolutely phenomenal. Um, it provides a lot of visibility um, in a different way than most people are used to getting that visibility, right? Like, you know, before at times, like we had logs in different places, we found a way to correlate those logs together. And now we have this medium that allows us to do that in a very structured way. Yep. And so I think traces are going to make a big change on the industry, especially for like our products um, you know, output different types of metrics. Yeah, you know, that's, that, your, your thing about tracing is, and I, I love distributed tracing, I tra go back to open tracing and open census days, but uh, one of the things is that tracing can handle the traffic aspects. I can know what the traffic looks yes. like go, going through. At the same point, it's having the application aspects. And what we used to have to do before this concept came around was we looked at one or the other and we hopefully could stick them together without drift and skew. Yes. And open telemetry has started solving this, this problem, almost observability 2.0. Mm -hmm. We get all the data already correlated for us, and that yes. will change the way we look at our application space. Yeah. Yes. So, like, there's something to be said when you're going from traces and immediately be able to see the metrics that right. correspond to those traces. It's, the, there's so much power there. Yeah, or, or doing the reverse. I had an alert come up. The alert came up and said something happened. It ran slow. It's over bandwidth. It's something like this. And to be able to go all the way back to the specific request that caused that in the first place. Yes. Understanding the beginning cause all the way to the end result can change the way that we approach code. The other thing with all this data is our application responses can become more intelligent. So, you know, that's why I think you're seeing a lot more AI ML mm -hmm. in a few places here, but you're seeing more AI and ML, artificial intelligence, machine learning, mm -hmm. because we now have the data that's meaningful. So Yes. And, and when we think about F5, right, like, so yep. we're on a journey, uh, what we call the adaptive apps, right? Mm -hmm. And adaptive apps is, like it sounds, you know, is applications that adapt based on their environment, right? right? And, you know, what's really neat about open telemetry is that by by making that type of data accessible and standard, it makes the adaptive apps journey that much easier, right? Like as different types of products start to output uh, similar metrics and they have common um, commonalities between them, yep. it becomes easier to join and, and provide a lot more ML and AI on top of it to enable our applications and infrastructure to dynamically adapt on their environment. Yeah, yeah, and as long as you understand the data science behind that and make sure that you are applying apples to apples. Yes. That's where the life can become interesting.